three two one hey shorties welcome back to the short asian girls podcast where we talk about everything asian from a five feet point of view this podcast is about music fashion food cheese mint and of course just being short and of course again we may not be abgs but we sure are sags and we'll talk about everything and anything related to it we have another guest a very very extra special guest today yes the The man man, the the myth the the legend (laughs) Mr. Irv. Thanks for having me, guys. Of course. That sounds kind of cool. <laughs> that was a cool intro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Um, if you want to introduce yourself to everyone really quickly. Yeah. Um, my name's Irvin Cordero, and I am the founder, CEO, and director of Track Life Music Network. And yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for being yeah. here. Of course. We kind of wanted to get down to the nitty gritty of like, how your career was getting to where you are today mm-hmm. um and kind of like how you see track life going on from past the present so yeah so my yeah. career started um i mean from a music standpoint it always i mean it started early my fat like my family they're all djs i used to dance when i was a kid starting in high school Music was just always a part of what was around me, my environment, and I was just always into it. And I dabbled into DJing, I danced, um, and then professionally, I got into tech. So I graduated with a degree in um, computer engineering. So I I did that for the sake of, that was what my parents wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I always had my job working in tech as a computer engineer, and then I had my passion in music. Um, not making music, but you know, working in music in some form or fashion. Um, And then it was just always two separate things. So track life is just basically my merge of the two. So Mm -hmm. that's why I always called it, whether it's a company or not, it's always my passion project because it's what I'm professional in and what I'm passionate about into one. So so yeah, that's kind of how this whole thing came to be. And yeah, and it's been fun so far. What made you want to become, like, I guess, a CEO? Or, like, what pushed you into being part of, like, the music industry, And I guess, in a sense? Um, Pushed me is, I think I'm just, and this is probably terrible for me to say, I'm a terrible employee, (laughs) just only because I've always pictured myself of doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. And I suck at not taking orders, Mm -hmm. but just kind of, having a boss, I guess, Mm -hmm. and only because I always knew I was going to end up doing my own thing and was going to be successful at it at some Mm -hmm. point. And yeah, and leadership wasn't something I pictured being Mm -hmm. because I'm pretty like pretty introverted. But what kind of set me up was dance. I was always the captain and leader of like my dance teams. Mm -hmm. And being in that position forced me to gain the qualities I needed to become a leader and do what I need to do and succeed at at any cost, basically. And, you know, I carry those values into what I'm what I'm doing today with with you guys in track life. Got to see one dance one day. Yeah. Hit that one two step. Exactly. (laughs) Um, But like what interested you about the music industry itself? Because I know like what track life where your music Mm-hmm. based company yeah. um i but mean it's a lot not of yeah. creatives, like a label but like, like why this industry um to be honest when we started track life it was never about the industry or being in the industry it was more so being about in the culture because mm. we were doing internet radio and that just kind of gave us a step into being in the culture doing live internet radio mixes mm-hmm. with myself my friends my cousins and taking that from doing that at home with them and then taking it into the studio ma- took us into the industry mm-hmm. because once we moved into a studio, we started to have more radio shows, more um, guests. We started to meet more people in music. So I guess that was, you know, there wasn't any specific day of what took us into the industry, but over time mm-hmm. with the people we had on the shows, people we worked with, we then became part of the industry and the industry started to recognize who we were. And yeah, um, I was never in pursuit of working in the music industry. I just wanted to work in music, Mm -hmm. whether it's independently or whatnot. But yeah, I think it just naturally carried us into it. And, you know, here we are today kind of making our impact in that scene. And I guess like 
having done this for a while because and you've also like started like mentioning that it was like a passion and then now it's kind of like a business venture for you how has you how have you seen the industry change from when because you said internet radio yeah. now there's like streaming platforms and stuff so yeah i feel like when we started to obviously where we are today was probably the biggest change in music that we've probably ever seen to go from you know cds and um even tapes mm -hmm. to streaming like that changed i mean as the music industry changed and just the trajectory of music changed mm -hmm. that forced us to change kind of our purpose and our whole business model mm -hmm. um to kind of cater to that because we've seen a lot of music organizations and companies come and go because they couldn't keep up with the change and that was almost us too to be honest like you know um internet radio it's still around, but I don't think it's got a bright future out mm -hmm. of it. And if we stayed in that lane, you know, who knows what track life would have been. But being that I'm in tech, it gave me the ability to adjust to the times, to adjust to the times in tech, the times in music, to where um, now during our time doing radio, the biggest takeaway from that was working with all these up and coming artists that's come through the radio station um, we've come to realize that they're our biggest market, they're our biggest impact, they're who's giving us feedback on what mm -hmm. we're doing. So they're the ones who's telling us that we're doing something right. We're giving them the time of day, we're giving them opportunity. So we want to lean into that and kind of serve them. And serving them is serving music because I feel like the future of music is independent. So being on that independent wave and serving up and coming artists, um, makes us really feel the impact that we're making. And that fulfills us so that now we're kind of just leaning into that and giving up and coming artists the platform and the opportunities to, to do what they do. And we find fulfillment in that. And I know Track Life's been around for like a whopping like 11 years, right? Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> is there like anything that you've seen specifically change change from then to now or like even like with like the employee bases mm -hmm. or or like just, just how like you do everything things. how you do it. um changing i mean changes no not really we still do things a lot of the same way i mean now we're a lot more focused and um some of us are older now so time's running out on like pursuing this and succeeding in it. So um, there's a little bit more pressure on that front, but I feel like we've changed because now we know a lot better. Mm -hmm. We've, like you said, we've done this for a long time, so we know what not to do. Um, and we've talked to a lot of people. We have a lot of mentors in this space now too, to where we know what this industry needs and we know how to do it. Now we're in pursuit of executing on it. And then I guess, like you mentioned, the 11 years, that's, that is a pretty long time. For someone who's not knowledgeable of the industry, is it like as cutthroat as like what people make it seem to be? Yeah, 1,000%, one, 1, super mm -hmm. cutthroat. Only because, I mean, there's one, there's social media. Yeah. Um, two, this is a relationship-based industry. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to say it, but it is a lot on who you know. Mm -hmm. And it's cutthroat to where... You know, I'm sure you guys understand like the number of followers you have and yeah. like the numbers matter a lot, um, more so than the music itself. And I get that that's important and that's what drives revenue. Mm -hmm. But with our business model, um, that's something we could still find revenue in with not, without having to focus on those type of numbers. We, yeah. could, we want to be able to focus on the quality of music. And we really think that Every artist has an audience. Mm -hmm. No matter what you think of an artist, I think every artist has an audience. And the fact that streaming kind of levels the playing field with all artists, whether you're a developed artist or up and coming, um, there's an audience out there for you. It's just a matter of kind of finding them. And because music's subjective. And the fact with social media now, it's not even just about the music. Sometimes it's your story. Sometimes just the way you look mm -hmm. will bring you fans of your music. Um, so yeah, and I think we're we're finding finally finding our way to adjust to that, and um, yeah, I mean we're excited to kind of execute on it. 
Do you think, like, like you mentioned social media and, like, how I feel like it's much easier now to kind of get a step in, like, th- this world. Do you think um, as entertain- the entertainment industry progresses, do you think it'll be harder to get noticed? Or do you think it'll be easier? Or it's, like, because since it's, like, mm-hmm. available for access to anyone, mm-hmm. do you think, like, that challenge will be, like, more of a good thing or, like, a bad thing? Um, I think we're facing that now. I think it's harder to be discovered because, mm-hmm. obviously, oversaturation. But it... I don't know, it tears down the barrier of entry into music. So it's harder to be discovered, but easier at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think it's just a matter of how hard you kind of put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Um, It's hard if you don't do anything. But if you work hard, I I think it gets easier over time. Because it is a persistence game and a Mm -hmm. consistency game. So, you know, if you're putting out songs like once a quarter then yeah you're gonna drown in the oversaturation but but yeah yeah well um do you have any tips for people who are wanting to enter kind of like their own careers in this industry because i know like you've brought track life from ground up and then you Mm -hmm. also have your own career in tech Mm -hmm. like is there any like advice you would want to give or any Um, tips i'll top my head i would say not to burn any bridges and I think I said this before too uh, don't be a dickhead because yeah. you get washed out in this industry with all the other dickheads mm-hmm. so really I think you know um, yeah I think relationships go a long way and sometimes they circle back around mm-hmm. um, and people will always remember the good people you know what I mean and you know music will always kind of um, stand for itself if it's good music and you stand behind it um it'll it'll find its way to success Mm -hmm. but if you can make great music and be a total asshole yeah um that goes hand in hand people will always listen to music remembering the asshole too so um but yeah i I would say don't burn bridges keep your relationships and and yeah i think just kind of like i mentioned earlier just kind of stay with the times and um have the passion for it to be able to keep up <laughs> i think it turned like off. a mom yeah i think it turned off okay and then since now that you like also mentioned don't not burning any bridges down and then how the industry has definitely changed and even like track life, it's cha- it's transformed, it's changed, and it's mm-hmm. still I feel like to this day gonna grow into something bigger. Where do you think the industry that you're working in, or like where track life is, and like how do you think it's gonna keep changing? Um, I really don't know. I don't think anybody knows mm-hmm. to be honest. I think it's a matter of just kind of being flexible. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if we kind of anticipate where it's going and then lock in on that. It could take a total left turn and mm-hmm. we won't be ready for it. I think we just kind of take it day by day and, um, you know, not be stuck in what we think is right and what we think works, mm-hmm. but kind of just kind of pay attention, listen to our market, listen to the artists on what they want. Because at the end of the day, they're who we serve. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's just kind of keeping our community close. Is there anything you're looking forward to as the industry changes? Or you want to do within like or like where industry? you wish it would go um or that actually you yeah try. i think i'm looking forward to when the industry is more i mean it's being more and more independent every day mm-hmm. um to where you know every artist is almost an equal um and yeah i mean it's not about labels pushing their artists or well, labels with a lot of money pushing artists i think People now, as technology grows, like they know what they want to find and they'll find it mm-hmm. without having to be, without having music kind of shoved down their throats through the media. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think I see that growing more and more, and we're here for it. And that's kind of where we're going to as a company. So we're ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then, um, and I guess if you could, like, if you could see where track life is, like, where do you see track life being? is right now like in the future kind of like 
A lot, in a few years, maybe five years. Uh, in the future, I want us to be kind of the jump off point for a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could be an artist with just five songs out, but I want Tracklight to be that, that vehicle that takes them to that next phase. Just because we know there's tons of artists on that level that mm -hmm. just need to be given the time of day, that just need yeah. to be given the opportunity to be heard. And the fact that we think that every artist... Not that we think every artist is dope, but we think every artist has someone, has fans out there for yeah. them um, and are willing to help them find those fans. Uh, yeah, I think it puts us in a good position of where this industry is going. And I think that's where track life is going too. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that brings us to the end of part one part of one. our episode with Mr. Irv. Big Boss Mr. Irv. Big Boss Irv. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the next episode, kind of talking about mm -hmm. more, I guess, more about track life and like mm -hmm. the ins and outs of it. And then I Diving more, deeper into yeah. the work project yeah, that you guys have done. Potentially bringing in other people that are yeah. a part of track life mm -hmm. that can kind of bring in their own spin to it. So, yeah. So, ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. See you in part two. Part two. <laughs>